What's Better Today? And welcome to the Leadership Advantage podcast by Dr. John Kenworthy. The Leadership Advantage isn't some magic pill or silver bullet to instant success as a leader, but I'm sharing the art and neuroscience of hacking expert leadership to unstuck your potential in life and work. What do you do when you can't find the time or the motivation to grow and develop? One of the biggest issues I hear from program participants is that they are simply too busy to take time out of their schedule to develop themselves. They get frustrated because they want to get better at some aspect of their leadership capabilities or their management skills so that they can save the time they currently don't have because they don't have enough time to get better and practice. Their daily work lives are filled with meetings and travel and rushing from one meeting to another rushing off to meet with clients and an overflowing inbox. There's no time to chew food properly at lunchtime, let alone time to coach or read a book. Of course, it depends how motivated you are to develop. And that's another concern I hear. My boss wants to put me on this training, but frankly, she should be doing this, not me and variations along the themes. I learnt how to lead teams when I was in school. I know how to lead teams. It's my team members who need to learn how to follow. (laughs) You think I'm kidding? Not in the least. This is a direct quote and I have heard many variations on the same prideful theme. I call this lack of motivation the, it's not me, it's them. But what if they never develop as a leader? You'll just keep banging your head against their leadership lid and complaining. Then there's the third excuse of not taking time out to develop. And this is one that stings a little. It is that training and development programs are boring. And I have to agree, I've attended more boring programs and presentations than entertaining and useful ones. Sometimes it's the content that is simply dull. More often it's the method and death by PowerPoint and blah, blah, blah. And these I find are the top three reasons that people don't develop and leverage their talents. It's them, not me. What I call the busyness dilemma and blah, blah, blah. So let's have a look at each of these for a little while in turn. It's not me, it's them. Reluctantly, the group of young managers turned their phones over on the desk, pretending that they had indeed turned them off and looked up to the workshop leader at the front of the room. Briefly, a questioning look in startled their eyes as they considered the absurdity of the question posed. Finally, one brave soul speaks for the whole group explaining that the problem was not their own leadership ability, but that of their bosses. It is them, not us, who need to develop their leadership capability. The ability to pass the buck for leadership is hardly confined to the current younger generation. The fish rots from the head is an ancient saying claimed to originate in many countries. But if you don't develop and get better now, then won't you one day be the head that gets blamed for starting the rot? 
Dr. John C. Maxwell uses the metaphor of the leadership lid, where your ability as a leader puts a lid firstly on your own effectiveness and then the effectiveness of your team. And that your performance is constrained by the leadership lid of your boss. If your own leader has a low leadership lid, that is, they have poorly developed leadership skills and abilities, then your performance and effectiveness is constrained to their lid. As you try to perform better and be a more effective leader, it's like banging your head against a low ceiling. And one of two things will happen. Either you will break through or you'll just get a sore head. In the latter case, your lust to perform diminishes to the extent where you no longer keep bashing your head against your leader's lid. If you break through, your boss may resent you. They may even try to undermine you, but at least you are no longer allowing yourself to be constrained by their abilities. The problem for many people is that they lack the necessary motivation to find the time to develop and grow. They seem content to wait for someone else to tell them that they need to do it. The busyness dilemma. I have no time to develop. I'm just too busy. There was a time when I truly was too busy to learn. A time when the summers were long and friends were fun and all anybody wanted to do was be outside and playing. Life was full of promise and learning was well dull, basically. Of course, I'm talking about school. Sure, nowadays, those young people just want to sit in classrooms and absorb all the fountains of wisdom that might just come up on the test or one of the far too many exams they take these days. Back then, I really was too busy to learn. Now, I can hardly get enough of it. Fortunately for me, one of the essential things about teaching and coaching for a living is that one has to learn a lot first. But most people are doing a job that they learned pretty well at everything they needed some time ago. Now they spend their days doing and genuinely find it difficult to find time to learn. And that's just the problem. Too busy to learn how to be less busy. A dilemma that faces almost everybody I meet. And then there's the problem that most learning and development is a waste of your time. Experience shows that most leadership or management development really is a waste of time. Time is precious. You have a lot to do in every minute of every day. It can feel as if your to-do list just gets longer and you laugh at notions of inbox zero, sitting listening to some boring expert witter on about this or that whilst you nod sagely. Hanging on to every word is hardly more exciting than attending that management meeting where someone will no doubt witter on about something not very important at all. Real and sustainable development simply takes too long. The truth is that real and sustainable development doesn't happen in a workshop. It happens when you consolidate the learning inside your brain with the real world actions that take place every day. Knowing something does not on its own help you unless you use that knowledge and you will only sustain any improvements if this new understanding pays you dividends. Busyness, why nobody has time to pause and develop themselves. Your schedule is already full and any gaps are quickly filled with actually doing your job or they get stolen by somebody happening by your desk and needing just a minute of your time to help them with their job. So if you're struggling to find time to develop yourself, you will only find time to develop if you schedule it. If you truly want to get better so that you can do things quicker, more effortlessly, be more productive and maybe earn 
more money, respect, trust. You will have to pay up front and steal enough time from yourself now. So how to prioritize your development time? I have advised enough people now to know that something has to give when you choose to develop yourself in any way. And C. Northcote Parkinson noted this 60 over years ago. Your work expands to fill the time available. So start stealing time from yourself. 10 minutes borrowed from your morning shortens the time available for work, which means for most people that you simply finish your work faster because you imposed a deadline. Or finish your meeting 10 minutes earlier. Trust me, no one will complain. Or start 10 minutes later in the morning. Oh, but my boss won't accept this, said one of my clients. Will they notice? I asked. If you want to leave your boss in charge of your future, then carry on as you have been. By the way, how has that been working out for you? Just take a moment to identify three tiny slots of 10 minutes that could be used. Going to the gym, walking to or from work, or to or from lunch your commute to or from work, toilet time, your coffee break, lunch time. Find three tiny 10 minute slots amongst there. Go get yourself an audio book or an audio abstract of a book and listen to it during these 10 minute slots. It's all about starting small. See, I expect my coaching clients to find two or three hours a week for their coaching sessions and their homework, also known as learning in action. When they deliberately and purposefully use something from our session on the job with their team or someone else. But to get to that two or three hours a week, we start with 10 minutes a day at first, in the first week, and gradually build up until they find maybe half an hour every day. So if you're too busy to develop, soon you will spend hours in later life if only you had developed yourself earlier. Just find those three 10 minute slots in your daily schedule and buy an audiobook. So we've talked about the leadership lead and why it's them and not me is not really true. And then how do you find any time is by starting small. Thirdly, the blah, blah, blah. You sit and watch in horror as another slide full of bullet points and charts fills the screen. The presenter begins another long monologue and you glance eagerly at the clock, wishing lunchtime to arrive, flicking ever so subtly to email every few minutes to check in case anything really important requires your attention. What the iPhone can teach us about motivation to grow and develop Many years ago, a lot of my work was teaching people how to use word processing and spreadsheets. I was very adept at using control key combinations on WordPerfect and how to use .diff files in VisiCalc to access more data. And if these terms are surreal to you, then you miss some fun times in the early days of personal computing. What was terrific for me was that there was so much functionality hidden in these software programs that people new to them were utterly overwhelmed. The manuals were written by techies, and <laughs> who reads manuals anyway? What new users needed was a real simple and incredibly easy way to do basic things. 
So I created training modules to do just that. Real easy, tiny, step by tiny step, progressive exercise to quickly master the essentials. No overwhelm, just progress towards a goal. And this is where the iPhone is incredible. It has been designed for consumption. It's so easy to use that a two-year-old can use an iPhone without being shown how. With an iPhone, you get to switch it on with one button and then everything you could ever want is an icon touch away. With a few touches, you achieve a goal and your brain receives a satisfying dose of dopamine, the happy chemical. Apple, in designing the iPhone, leverages your brain's motivational secrets. And that secret is that we are most motivated as we progress towards achieving a goal. Extra effort and confusion and overwhelm with too many options and too many steps increases stress, which undermines motivation. Word processing software with its thousands of menu options and numerous steps to achieve a desired result overwhelms and stresses the newcomer's brain, making that dopaminal motivation rush a distant possibility. But if I take you one tiny step, an easy tiny step at a time, I can increase your satisfaction in achieving progress toward your desired result and guide you to the end with ease. And you can do this in the same way to increase your own motivation and satisfaction in growing and developing leadership or any field. Identify just one small improvement that you want to make this week. One new technique of influencing, for example, or one thing that you can do easily to improve a relationship. One activity such as writing your journal every day for this one week. Reaching out to one person each day to tell them how awesome they are. Or read one chapter of one book and choose to take away one thing to try that day. What do you do when you can't find the time or motivation to grow and develop? Well, if you can't find the time, you'll just have to steal it from something less deserving and deliberately schedule small 10 minute blocks throughout your day for you to develop with tiny little increments. Remembering that whilst it may be true that your boss should be doing this, you are not in charge of their development, but you are in charge of your own and you'll be saving yourself hours of wondering if only later in life. I hope that you really enjoyed this episode and will share some highlights with the people you care about most. My team and I are working on a series of exciting new projects in this art and neuroscience of hacking expert leadership to unstuck your true potential in life and work. To learn more, visit leadershipadvantage.com or just search for Dr. John Kenworthy and connect with me.